Hello, my name is Cordana Fontana Giusti and I'm Professor of Architecture and Urban Design at Kent School of Architecture and Planning. Hi, I'm John Leverland. I'm a practitioner in urban design. I'm also a senior lecturer uh, on the uh, Masters in Architecture and Urbanism at the Kent School of Architecture and Planning. Today, John and I are going to make a little introduction into our program Masters in Architecture and Urban Design. So let me start. Urbanism in relation to current events and our global approach. What is approach we take at Kent School of Architecture? What is our philosophy? What do we particularly stand for? What is our little program all about? First of all, we like very much to work interdisciplinary and internationally. That's why we are based both in UK and in France both in Canterbury and Paris. We run our program on two sites throughout the three terms. In the first term, you are based in Canterbury. In the second term, you are based in Paris. In this particular condition of COVID-19 crisis, we are sending you a strong message that we will be here for you waiting and that we will be working online in case we can't meet each other in flash in Canterbury and in Paris. <clears throat> we will constantly also update you about what will happen next if the situation changes. But we are trying to keep on working whatever the conditions are at present. And indeed resilience is the name of the game of us as architects, of us as community in Kent School of Architecture, of us generally as living in the cities today. So as always in our history, whenever there was a problem, whenever there was a challenge, whenever there was a crisis, it is in our human nature to pull together and respond to it. So let's see how we are going to do it within the context of MA in architecture and urban design, which in a way offers this very unique perspectives on contemporary city and combines the knowledge and the strength of both architectural theory and practice, as well as design, studies of urban experience and living conditions of city today. Yes, it's true, Cordona. I think it's a very strange time that we're living in. Certainly population growth, health, the quality of human habitat around the world are some of the biggest issues we all face today. Uh, cities hold the key to the entire world's future are a vital part of the solution. High density city living is the most efficient way for people to live with the lowest carbon footprint, where transport and essential infrastructure systems can be run most efficiently. Yet these theories are challenged by COVID-19, in which close proximity to others is regulated. Uh, indeed, many people have fled from the cities to escape the current pandemic. Uh, so cities must respond resourcefully High density cities also need an infrastructure of green landscape and open spaces where population can breathe. These are global issues relevant to all countries and cultures. So the careful nurturing and teaching of tomorrow's urbanness is really now more, much more important than ever. Our master's programme in architecture and urban design therefore teaches about the importance of cities as centres of our lives and cultures globally. Cities have undoubtedly always been the centers of culture. There are no culture without the city. But many cities are no longer sustainable in terms of available spaces, quality of life, pollution, and natural resources. The MOD program teaches about the urban conditions across cultures, political demarcations, acknowledging that we are all inextricably linked our holistic approach is concerned with sustainability and resilience in urban planning as we address the environment in which we live, the society that we form, as well as the well-being of every individual. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it's very important uh, on our programme, the way that students learn how urbanism and architecture are complementary, but also different. They're different disciplines inextricably bound together. The 15th century Italian architect uh, Leon Battista Alberti famous, famously said, the city is like a great house and the house in its turn is a small city. 
and, and I think it's fundamental that we understand the relationship between the two. And it's necessary in order to be able to think both creatively and spatially. As well as the theory of urbanism, we teach urban design through practical design modules, exploring the relationship between architecture, landscape and urbanity. We demonstrate how this way of thinking can be applied to the practical planning of all urban landscapes irrespective of size, scale, or culture. The, all the design modules explore practical exercises in master planning and, and provide our students with a way of addressing a wide range of social, technical, infrastructural, and conceptual issues that will help them throughout their careers. Thank you, John. Now, let me say something about the practical arrangements that we are going to have throughout these three terms. As you know, the program consists of three terms and runs through 12 months, calendar year from September to September. So, uh, as we said, it is a cross-culture interdisciplinary program spread over three terms and two cities and run in a variety of um, forms. We teach you through learning and lectures. We teach you through seminars. We teach you through design tutorials, both on campus, online, or at the architectural practice in Paris. You are constantly supported uh, by our staff and you are constantly alerted to the latest agenda that we try to address. In the autumn term, uh, I will be teaching a theoretical uh, module, which is very much orientated towards preparing you how to address various aspects of urban design. This module is called Research Methods and Analysis, and it will it introduce you a numbers of methods, scientific, practical, design, and otherwise, that will be important for you throughout the year in order to develop you essential skills for architecture and urban design. In the spring term, you will continue your studies in Paris, as I said, and it will be mainly centered in the historical Montparnasse at Kent School of Architecture and Culture, which is really based there. You will have on your doorstep all important libraries, culture institution, architectural monuments, museums, etc., which will be there for you to experience and learn from. We will offer you advice and support and you will be part of an experience of urban design practice linked to a prestigious Parisian office. Yes, it's true, Godana, and I think it's also uh, useful to explain that, that uh, on the program we, we study cities throughout the world, uh, not just London and Paris, and, uh, and so that we can understand how the shapes and patterns uh, give them their individual characters. I think all uh, great cities have a, a core which is legible and coherent. So whilst buildings are an essential component of any city, it's the spaces between the buildings that's the territory of the urbanist. And this we call the public realm. It's the, it's the primary infrastructure of any city and it enables movement as well as providing for the Greek green spaces that now so all that mustn't be regarded as a luxury it's absolutely essential so this is the main focus of the design module in the autumn term uh, understanding and applying this kind of thinking uh, students are asked to plan a new community uh, which includes uh, squares where people can congregate parks and gardens where people can relax streets and spaces where meetings can be held and markets and and societies can, and neighborhoods can celebrate collectively. Uh, so the initial design study will be located in London, as Godana said, uh, and that means that students will have plenty of opportunity to make site visits and, and really get to know the city. Yes. Something about the spring term when you go to Paris and something about the lectures, perhaps it hasn't been said. Uh, whilst the first term lectures which is about research methods and analysis, will concentrate on general research methods and analysis, which will equip you how to go ahead. Uh, in the second term, we will be more focused and we will uh, more specifically address urban design projects throughout history. Yes, and, 
in the spring term design module, students study how present day Paris emerged and evolved from its natural landscape context in order to understand the shapes and patterns of this great city and to learn how to apply them. So we learn about the urban morphology and how it's rooted in all kinds of things, ge geology, geography, topography, and also the history of the original landscape from which it emerged. So students are then, having understood this, they're then asked to create a master plan that explores how the memory of that in underlying natural landscape can be applied to the present city to make a positive contribution to the unique urban context in which it's located. So students also consider opportunities to harness the natural landscape to provide obvious things like climate resilience and water security and flood relief in, in, in the context of climate change. So sustainable methods of drainage and water cleansing, even food production. The, the map sequence you, that we're showing you now shows some of the work that this year's students have been doing in, 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 in understanding uh, how the underlying landscape of Paris has shaped its urban morphology that we see today. And these next slides illustrate some of the master plans produced by Maud students over recent years, all exploring how this knowledge of the city is applied uh, in practical ways. And this is the kind of thing that when, you, when you've learned it, it can be applied really to any city and any culture globally. Thank you, John. Let me just move to the third term, your final term, the crown of your work, where you are supposed to sublimate and bring together all the work, all the knowledge that you have learned in terms one and two in both design theory and design practice. So let me just say what it involves. It involves work on your dissertation. Dissertation which carries the greatest number of credits, 60 credits, and in a way the work starts already at the end of the second term, that is to say roughly in March. You will be asked what will be that subject that you will ultimately want to address. You will be asked what is that that interests you the most. You will be asked to concentrate on something that has provoked you the most and something that perhaps you can see as, where, as an area where you can make your original contribution towards the knowledge you will be asked to do whatever you want to do as long as it's related to the area of architecture and urban design as long as it addresses the cities as long as it's a relevant theoretical problem as long as you address something that in a way is more than just recapitulating what is happening but sort of making that small initial contribution uh, to the discipline that in a way every master student should make Yes, yeah, so interesting times. Uh, the, the crises that we currently face in the world uh, pose some really serious challenges uh, to our future. So it's imperative that we rebalance our relationship with our environment. But there's never been a more exciting time to, to study architecture and urbanism together like this. So uh, well, the challenge, I suppose, we're saying is, is that we all have to face is how do we continue to create places that are really truly livable, uh, yet successfully accommodate population growth, whilst at the same time arresting climate change. So very complicated set of uh, uh, issues and equations that we have to wrestle with. Well, yeah, our masters in our architecture and urban design program really teaches us how the issue of growth can be turned into an opportunity for placemaking through an understanding of sustainable and resilient urbanism. So, well, thank you very much for your patience in listening to us. Uh, and we really look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you onto our programme uh, in September. <laughs>